When you travel far, far away from home, you will find the Lord at your side. Jesus leads you on every road you take, and He'll always be your trusty guide. Helping a Fallen Comrade Evening was coming on and Tom, trapped under fallen timber during a sudden storm, lay waiting for help. A man heard his cry for help and, wishing to be of service, attempted to reach Tom, but he made a fatal mistake. He didn't follow the first rule of first aid. Between the two men lay fallen power lines. He decided to crawl beneath the power lines to reach him and to see what could be done. After checking Tom over, the man carefully crawled back to seek help. But, with the power lines laying so close to the ground, he accidentally touched one. He lost his own life in seeking to help another. Why? How could one, seeking to do good, to help another, lose his life so tragically? It comes back to the first lesson always taught in first aid. Doctors ABC. Let's take a moment to review this and apply it to our spiritual life. First Aid Action Plan Danger. Ensure the area is safe for yourself, for others, and for the patient. This is one time you must come first. If you place yourself in danger, are you able to give the assistance your comrade needs? What steps must you take to ensure you stand on solid ground while reaching out to souls around you? In 1 Corinthians 10, 12-13, we read, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. In the Review and Herald, December 20, 1881, we read, the good shepherd lay down his life for the sheep. Under shepherds should watch for souls as they that must give account, remembering that they are to be in samples to the flock. He who takes upon himself the responsibility of instructing others in the things of God should himself be a constant learner in the school of Christ. God will accept the labours of all who obey the Saviour's call, follow me. As they continue to follow Jesus, they will become more like him in character. Love to God and man will pervade the life. The thoughts will linger naturally upon heavenly things. The theme of conversation will be the subject of greatest interest. The Christian hope. The very countenance will express the peace which passeth knowledge. Such a life is the best testimony that can be born for Christ. Response. Ask for their name. Squeeze their shoulders, and if there is no response, send for help. If there is a response, make them comfortable. Check for injuries and monitor their response. Demonstrate your love and care by showing personal interest in their welfare. Galatians 6, 1-3 says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfil the law of Christ. In Review and Herald, August 20th, 1895, it says, The souls for whom Christ has died are of far more value than gold and silver and precious stones. Let men value souls as God has estimated them, those who are in affliction, those who have erred from the truth, if so estimated, will not be passed by and left to perish. If we are more favourably situated than our brethren, let us be found in making straight paths for our feet, for it is through the mercy of God that we are so situated. Shall we abuse his mercy, and because we are so blessed become hard-hearted, unfeeling, unlovable, and unloving toward the very persons who most need our compassion? Send for help. Call for an ambulance or ask another person to make the call. Seek wise counsel. And where do we find wise counsel? We read in Timothy 
3, verse 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And in Proverbs 19, verse 20 and 21, we read, Hear counsel and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. Airway. Open mouth, if foreign material is present, place the person in the recovery position and clear the airways with fingers. If air is the gift of life here on earth, what is the gift of God spiritually? We read in Acts of the Apostles, page 519, paragraph 2. Only by the precious blood of the Son of God could the transgressor be redeemed. The plan of salvation was laid in sacrifice. Christ gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity. And as the crowning blessing of salvation, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What obstacles can separate us from accepting this gift? In Review and Herald, August 20, 1895, it says, There are souls who err and who feel their shame and their folly. They are hungry for words of encouragement. They look upon their mistakes and errors until they are almost driven to desperation. Instead of lifting up the finger, instead of speaking vanity, instead of reproving and condemning and taking away the last ray of hope that the Son of Righteousness sheds into their hearts, let your words fall as healing balm upon their bruised soul. Be not like desolating hail that beats down and destroys the tender hope spring up in the hearts. Leave not the hungry, starving soul in his helplessness to perish because you fail to speak words of tenderness and encouragement. Breathing. Check for breathing. Look, listen and feel. If the breathing isn't normal, start CPR. If the breathing is normal, place in the recovery position and monitor. Pray for your comrades, but even more importantly, pray with your comrades. Nothing can lead us closer to God than continued communication with Him. But as the spokes in a wheel come closer together as they reach the centre, so we are drawn closer to one another when we reach out to God together in prayer. In Gospel Workers, page 254, paragraph 4, it says, Prayer is the breath of the soul. It is the secret of spiritual power. No other means of grace can be substituted and the health of the soul be preserved. Prayer brings the heart into immediate contact with the wellspring of life and strengthens the sinew and muscles of the religious experience. Neglect the exercise of prayer or engage in prayer spasmodically, now and then, as seems convenient, and you lose your hold on God. The spiritual faculties lose their vitality. The religious experience lacks health and vigour. CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. 30 chest compressions, 2 breaths. Continue CPR until help arrives or patient recovers. Jesus must abide in the heart that we may be able to give a breath of life to the weary or stumbling souls placed in our path for just this purpose. Sharing the life that we have with others breathes new life into them, not just praying for them, but with them. In the Ministry of Healing, page 58, we read, All who are under the training of God need the quiet hour for communion with their own hearts, with nature and with God. In them is to be revealed a life that is not in harmony with the world, its customs or its practices, and they need to have a personal experience in obtaining a knowledge of the will of God. We must individually hear him speaking to the heart. When every other voice is hushed and in quietness we wait before him, the silence of the soul makes more distinct the voice of God. He bids us, Be still and know that I am God. This is the effectual preparation for all labour for God. Amidst the hurrying throng and the strain of life's intense activities, he who is thus refreshed will be surrounded with an atmosphere of light and peace. He will receive a new endowment of both physical and mental strength. 
His life will breathe out a fragrance and will reveal a divine power that will reach men's hearts.